Hello, welcome back to another Teacher Tips with Tommy. Teacher Tips with Tommy! Thank you to Mech Blank from the comments, that's a much better name. Today I want to talk about a feedback model that I've been utilizing ever since I learned it from my cooperating teacher during student teaching and have molded and adapted in a couple tiny ways, but I find it super useful. So first, what is a feedback model? I work in the performing arts and often we need to tell those who have just performed what we think of their performance. Because that's the only way you can grow, right? If you get feedback on what you just did. But because the performing arts and especially acting theater are, are so close closely tied to who we are as individuals and how we feel as a person, it's easy for this kind of feedback, this kind of constructive criticism to be really self-defeating. We hear negative comments much, much louder than we hear positive comments. In comes a feedback model, a structure for how you want your students and, frankly, how you yourself are going to create and mold and frame this feedback in a way that can be acted upon and in a way that can be impactful without damaging the psyche of a performer. The feedback model I use, I like to refer to as keepers and upgrade. It's a two-fold model, as you might have guessed. The basic structure is, first, you give the performer keepers. Things you enjoyed about their performance that you would like to see them replicate the next time they do it. I really enjoyed your vocal projection. It looked like you had really good breath support. I liked the way you crossed downstage left on the particular line because I really think you were utilizing your stage space in an interesting way in that moment. I thought you had a really good handle on the text. It was clear you worked hard on memorizing your lines and you had a very clear understanding of what you were saying. The benefit of doing these keepers, of doing these first, is it it forces you to point out the positives right from the very beginning. And you phrase these when you demo them from a very I feel, I think perspective. You, the audience, felt or saw these things. That makes them entirely genuine because they come from your personal experience and gives them a sense of optionality when it comes to the performer, right? It's, it's just your opinion, it's just how you felt. And really, in this kind of performer audience setup, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for how the audience felt. And so what better way to phrase these keepers than as I feel and I think statements. After you get through the keepers, you move on to upgrades. This segment always takes a little bit of demonstration and teaching at the beginning of the school year, but kids pick up on it really fast. The idea of an upgrade is a suggestion for next time. Next time you perform this scene, can you try this? Maybe try this. Next time you perform this monologue, maybe work on your memorization for that last part. Next time you do this scene, maybe try cheating out a little more during the second half. Next time you perform this scene, I'd love to see you explore more diverse stage pictures in your staging. So there's a couple important aspects of upgrades to unpack here. First of all, an upgrade is always a suggestion. It's always a, maybe try this, how about this? This kind of falls in that same category as the I feel statements of the keepers. Making it a suggestion allows the performer to either take it or leave it, which is important, right? You're not stating that this is the final answer because performing arts are so subjective anyway. They're very rarely is a final answer. It is just a suggestion, just an idea of something you might try. Then, this suggestion is always phrased for next time. Next time you perform this, try this. When you do this scene again, when you do this monologue again, when you sing this song again, when you dance this dance again, try this. Phrasing this as a for next time statement cuts out what I think is one of the big problems of what a lot of educators call constructive criticism. And that is, a lot of constructive criticism is phrased in the negative. Don't do this, or I noticed you do that, stop. Or, uh, you know, you did this wrong. and. Once you start phrasing things for next time, and you should encourage students to, n to to use words that aren't negative, to not use the word not, to not use the word don't. Once you start phrasing things for next time, then it is no longer a personal attack, or it can't be perceived that way. This is just a 
suggestion for how you can improve. And so then as a part of the bigger picture, this upgrade system plays into some of my lesson structure as well. Every scene that a student performs, they always perform twice, getting this kind of feedback after the first performance. Because that legitimizes these suggestions for next time. If we're making suggestions for next time and you're not going to perform it again, then there's no reason to give that kind of feedback. And, in fact, when my students perform the scene for a second time, they don't get this kind of feedback from their peers. They just get it from me, because really, there isn't as concrete of a next time. There's another unit, but they're not going to do this scene again. But then, as part of the even larger picture outside of my class, my hope is that this kind of metacognition of how you give feedback can be very useful to a student outside of a theater class. We give feedback and suggestions about things all the time, and trying to find the way to make those suggestions heard and make them stick while also remembering the human and not stepping on someone's toes, that's a really hard thing to do as a being in society. And so to have this framework, to have this structure of keepers and upgrades, here are things I like that you did, those I feel and I think statements, and then here are some suggestions for what you might try next time. Very non-confronting ideas of something you might do that removes all negative and looks forward. If you can give feedback outside of performing arts situations like this, if you can find ways to phrase critical feedback like that in other parts of your life, I, I find that it is much more impactful and much more effective and becomes a much greater force for change than some of our more traditional feedback structures, which often rely on you did this, stop, or I don't like that that happened, um, and fall into these kind of negative buckets. Keepers and upgrades. A feedback model maybe you should try. I'll see you next time.